I'm here today with Peter Banks and we are going to LCV, the show for low carbon vehicles. Sort of a, a trade show more or less, isn't it? Right, let's get cracking. range they've heard the dreadful range anxiety and that's um, but you wouldn't ask you wouldn't necessarily ask it would be a different question if it was about a, a fossil fuel car wouldn't it? it well, yeah would be, because they recharge it go on a full tank? yeah well but, e <laughs> but even then most people wouldn't really care because the recharge time is tiny yes. and the ranges are all much longer you know, the problem with EVs is range is, the, is one of the co main constraining factors on people's purchasing decision. So they really care about this number. And the problem is that the number that everybody advertises is a, you know, bull-faced lie. It's, it's range gate. <laughs> well, it's just, it's totally unhelpful yeah. because it tells people nothing, which means they're Fight out the bat before they've even bought the car, they've got to start guessing how far they can go in it. I've always loved the look of that bike. I didn't know there were that many Mirais in the whole of the country. Okay, a black Model X. Now you're talking my language. I bet that's totally bonkers on the track. Do you want to take a guess? I actually have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> Energy storage using phase change material. Good to meet you. And you. So this is uh, an electric. Thank you very much. An electric vehicle uh, with heat batteries in it, and the heat batteries are here to make the vehicle go the same range, regardless of whether it's hot or cold. So instead of getting that horrible range drop off that yeah. you get during, uh, you know, a cold spell in the yeah. winter. When, I mean, this is a 55 mile uh, electric vehicle. It's uh, essentially an IMEV, the yep. Mitsubishi IMEV. A venerable, I know, I know well the one, respected the classic, electric vehicle, yep. a classic. Um, so, one of our engineers who actually drives this vehicle lives 52 miles from work. Ouch. So, during the summer, well, during a, a temperate summer, he can go home easily. Yep. Um, during the winter, he couldn't. So, we put one of our heat batteries in. So, this is a heat battery. So, he had one of these on the floor. That was electrically charged just after the electric battery had finished charging. And then it would provide all of the heating for him on the way into work. So he got a 55 mile vehicle all year. There are lots of vehicles that are used on routes, buses, delivery yeah. trucks, where consistency of range is actually almost more important than how much range you have. Because yeah. if you know that every day you can rely on 55 miles or 100 miles or whatever it is, yeah. that's an important number. Now, if you have to assume that a third or, or a half of the, of the miles might go away in, in a very cold yeah. spell or a very hot snap, then you have to basically say that's not a 100 mile vehicle, it's a 50 mile vehicle. This is a, an engineering breadboard. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a mobile test centre, if you like. Yes, it's clearly, not, uh, it's clearly not consumer it's, ready. It's not Just consumer ready. So what we're doing here is we're charging uh, a cold battery with yep. cold. So that's for doing the air conditioning side of things. And there's this little tiny compressor here, which is running from mains electricity, mm -hmm. uh, which is taking heat out of that, freezing it, so that it's ready to deliver cooling energy at the vents. This hot battery was actually last charged about three days ago. It stores its heat very, very well because we use vacuum insulation panel. Yep. And that allows us to both keep the heat and cool and also to separate the hot side and cold side. Uh, and it doesn't yep. leak through there very very much at all. It's very, very effective. So we're able to experiment on this vehicle with a huge range of scenarios, ranging from, you know, do we charge 
do we charge and eject the waste heat from cooling because we know it's a hot day? Or do we put that heat anyway into the hot side battery because maybe in the night time it will be cold? And that's kind of the, the sort of scenarios that we're exploring on this vehicle. And we're doing that for the bus market, the delivery vehicle market, and eventually it will be in the passenger car market, we think. Yes. You want to try and move on it quite quickly. Yes. Because as battery density increases, yes. it fixes the problem of not being able to heat or cool the cabin from battery. Because, I was, for example, when I had my Nissan Leaf, yeah. it was sure. a massive chunk of the range that it yeah. took to heat the car yeah. in winter. But in a Tesla, it's a much, much smaller percentage yes. of the available power. I to totally do get that. your point. And I, I would, would observe that for fleet operators, that equation is a bit more difficult. Yeah. Because oversizing the battery by a factor of 50% yep. or 100% yep. oversizing is an expensive proposition. Yes, very much Relative so. to the cost of this technology. You know, will, will, will we find 200 miles is the optimal number? You know, will, will, mm. will we find that actually 150 miles but range optimized, range consistent all year, yes. might be the optimal number. I've always said that 150 miles of any weather, any legal speed range exactly. is for a, cons yeah. for a consumer, yeah. ordinary car, maybe yeah. less so for a traveling yeah. salesman, but yeah. for ordinary people, yeah. that's spot on. Yeah, and that's essentially what we do. Well, thank you very much for thank you. showing me your fantastically interesting heat battery. <laughs>
bit. That At the moment, EVs are quite a small proportion. Yes. When it's a large proportion... You know, when you're talking about the visually impaired, yeah. or blind people especially, they need those sounds to navigate their environment. This is, this is more aimed, we're aiming more at the um, electric bus and delivery and logistics vehicle market as opposed to the passenger cars. Yeah, well that, that is the, a dead cert. I mean, yeah. they already have those. Yeah, well, thanks so much for the interview. Cheers. That is seriously cool. I'd love one of those. <laughs> The electric Morgan. There you go, Dad. That's your next car, hopefully. That's a good idea, I like that. Yeah, this is specifically designed for easy integration into street type furniture, yeah. It's the earthworks that take the time exactly, and cost the money. Yeah, yeah I see, I, so, I follow so you. The in-city um, uh, charging infrastructure is one of the big sort of barriers to, is, yeah, to yeah. full EV adoption. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you have to be able to charge at home. Yeah, you're talking sort of five hours or something to charge the car, so yeah. it needs to be somewhere where you're parked overnight or at least for a few hours. We've forgotten how hot it was today. And time to head home, I think. Right, thank you very much for the lift. No problem. Yeah. Hello, I suspect we need shepherding out. They're going to trust my sense of direction. People say, oh, it would be nice if you had uh, wireless charging. Honestly, I really don't know because I'd be going backwards and forwards. Is it aligned properly? Oh no, it's not quite. It just seems like hassle. I mean, that, that was extremely quick and easy. Uh-oh. I'm going to get into the driver's seat on, and then. sit there for a long time. <laughs> you can drive somewhere then. Yeah. You come in, Dad. <laughs> you close your door. Come on. Right, on this Sunday, we have the electric car or the electric vehicle EV workshop at the beautiful First Sight Art Gallery in Colchester. And uh, we have got a guest speaker called Darren Smith from Glyn Hopkins Nissan. And we have a guest vlogger <laughs> called James Cook, who's a splendid chap. and. Uh, myself as well. I'm Peter Banks and um, I'm speaking on behalf of the Green Party in Colchester. This Sunday, three o'clock, first sight Colchester. Uh, we like we like to call it a vlog. Really good to see you. Cheers. Well, I think this is probably where I say I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to give it a thumbs up and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye. drove a Nissan Leaf yeah. and I just used to wear a thick coat. I could just about live with it. My wife, ah, oh, the complaints, it's yeah. terrible. So that's yeah. why I'm in a Tesla now. Yeah, that's a much Less better complaints. idea. <laughs>